Letter five. My dear Wormwood, it is a little bit disappointing to expect a detailed report on your work and to receive instead such a vague rhapsodity as your last letter. You say you are delirious with joy because the European humans have started another of their wars. That is in reference to World War II. I see very well what has happened to you. You are not delirious, you are only drunk. Reading between the lines in your very unbalanced account of a patient sleepless night, I can reconstruct your state of mind fairly accurately. For the first time in your career, you have tasted that wine which is the reward of all our labors, the anguish and bewilderment of a human soul, and it has gone to your head. I can hardly blame you. I do not expect old heads on young shoulders. Did the patient respond to some of your terror pictures of the future? Did you work in some good self-pitying glances at the happy past? Some fine thrills in the pit of his stomach, were there? You played your violin prettily, didn't you? Well, well, it's all very natural. But do remember, Wormwood, that duty comes before pleasure. If any present self-indulgence on your part leads to the ultimate loss of the prey, you will be left eternally thirsty for that draught of which you are now so much enjoying your first sip. If, on the other hand, by steady and cool-headed application here and now you can finally secure his soul, he will then be yours forever, a brimful living chalice of despair and horror and astonishment, which you can raise to your lips as often as you please. So do not allow any temporary excitement to distract you from the real business of undermining faith and preventing the formation of virtues. Give me, without fail, your next letter a full account of the patient's reactions to the war, so that we can consider whether you are likely to do more good by making him an extreme patriot or an ardent pacifist. There are all sorts of possibilities. In the meantime, I must warn you not to hope too much from a war. So here, uh, apparently, Wormwood has written Screwtape a letter expressing his excitement over the fact that Europe is going to war because he thinks this is really going to help the devils out and like cause people to stumble and come over kind of like to their side, right, and join their father's house. And he's not necessarily wrong, but in this letter, Screwtape's going to say, "Hey, like, don't get too excited yet because war can also have." the opposite effect. Um, and there's kind of two sides to this, right? Because after um, World War II, let's say, um, right, the amount of believers, Christians in England, really started to decline to whereas now, let me see, I wrote it down, um, only 6% of people in England identify as practicing Christians. And that is as of 2022. 6% of people. So clearly, you know, what has happened to their nations over the years where that number has plummeted so far? And perhaps, and I don't know, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but you think about World War II, you think about all the atrocities that happened there with the concentration camps, um, how much London and England went through with being bombed and um, the horrors that they saw. And so that might have affected people's faith there. And again, I haven't done a lot of research into that, but you have to think, you know, th there are two sides. People can come out of a hard situation like war stronger in their faith, or they could also potentially um, lose their faith as well. Of course, the war is entertaining. The immediate fear and suffering of the humans is a legitimate and pleasing refreshment for our myriad of toiling workers. But what permanent good does it do us unless we make use of it for bringing souls to our father below? When I see the temporal suffering of humans who finally escape us, I feel as if I've been allowed to taste the first course of a rich banquet and then denied the rest. It is worse than not to have tasted it at all. The enemy, true to his barbarous methods of warfare, allows us to see the short misery of his favorites, only to tantalize and torment us, to mock the incessant hunger which during this present phase of great conflict, his blockade is admittedly imposing. Uh, the great conflict is referring to kind of like the war um, with Satan, and we kind of see references of uh, Satan throughout the Bible, right? We have Isaiah, we have Daniel, we have Revelation, and that this is kind of a reference to that. His blockade is admittedly imposing. Let us therefore think rather how to use than how to enjoy this European war. For as certain tendencies inherent in it, which are in themselves by no means in our favor, we may hope for a good deal of cruelty and unchastity. 
But if we are not careful, we shall see thousands turning in this tribulation to the enemy, while tens of thousands who do not go so far as that will nevertheless have their attention diverted from themselves to values and causes which they believe to be higher than the self. I know that the enemy disproves, disapproves many of these causes, but that is where he is so unfair. He often makes prizes of humans who have given their lives for causes he thinks bad on the monstrously sophistical ground that the humans thought them good and were following the best they knew. Consider, too, what undesirable deaths occur in wartime. Men are killed in places where they knew they might be killed, and to which they go, if they are at all of the enemy's party, prepared. So he tells Wormwood here, hey, Wormwood, also think about it this way. These soldiers going into battle, they know there's a chance that they might die. And so they've had this opportunity to make peace with God, to realize their own mortality and realize, hey, like this life does end and to think about what happens after this life. And so that could sway them over to the quote unquote enemy side, God's side, right? Because they've had time to uh, get to know him, right? And confess him as their Lord and Savior before they go off into battle. So he says that that can really backfire on us. How much better for us? If all humans died in costly nursing homes amid doctors who lie, nurses who lie, friends who lie, as we have trained them, promising life to the dying, encouraging the belief that sickness excuses every indulgence, and even if our workers know their job, withholding all suggestion of a priest lest they should betray to the sick man his true condition. So he says, you know, what is actually better is people dying, you know, just kind of slowly of old age and because they're around doctors and nurses and say, oh, yeah, you know, we can fix you. Here's this medicine. You can do this and that and, and you'll be just fine. So they're not always thinking about mortality. They're not always thinking about what comes after our time on earth. So he says, I would rather have that happening, right? Like no war happening and having people not thinking about their mortality rather than a war occurring. And how disastrous for us is the continual remembrance of death, which war enforces. One of our best weapons, contented worldliness, is rendered useless. In wartime, not even a human can believe that he is going to live forever. I know that Scabtree and others have seen in wars a great opportunity for attacks on faith, but I think that view is exaggerated. So he mentions another devil here, Scabtree, who does like the possibility of war and what war can bring. The enemy's human partisans have all been plainly told by him that suffering is an essential part of what he calls redemption, so that a faith which is destroyed by a war, a pestilence, cannot really have been worth the trouble of destroying. I am speaking now of diffused suffering over a long period such as the war will produce. Of course, at the precise moment of terror, bereavement, or physical pain, you may catch your man when his reasons temporarily suspended. But even then, if he applies to enemy headquarters, I have found that post is nearly always defended. Your affectionate uncle, screw tape. So he says, yeah, war can be a great thing, but right, if someone is going to die and he is asking right, the Lord to forgive him, right, there's always someone there to welcome him with open arms. Right? The Lord is always there to welcome you with open arms. And so screw tape says, like, we never want it to get to that point. It better that they are living these long lives with no war in them so that they are not thinking about what happens next.